It's all it's right, all right to, be to be just a little bit crazy. Being, being creative, creative is being, being a little bit crazy, crazy in just the right, right vibration. vibration. With, that With that in mind, mind you should understand, should understand God's, God's completely God. insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first a little background on why I am calling this one the dichotomy of positive, negative, atheism, and theism. Or you could also call it the dichotomy of positive, negative, science and religion or god or what have you. Anyway, on my DeviantArt account there is um, a little graphic that I did up called um, Two Sides of the Same BS. And um, there's two videos I had watched. The first video being a like a two or three hour long debate between Bill Nye and Ken Ham. Now, <laughs> before now I've never heard of either of these guys, but apparently Bill Nye is Bill Nye, the science guy, and he's an atheist scientist, not saying all scientists are atheists, and not saying all atheists are scientists, but this guy just happens to be both, and um, he's kind of old school classical mechanics in his thinking, and Ken Ham is um, one of those creationist scientists, um, you know, one of the ones who thinks that, despite, you know, all other data, that, um, you know, based on the Bible, that, you know, the universe is only 6,000 years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one word question Bill Hicks once asked, man, dinosaur. <laughs> but anyway. Um, that's, that's a funny one, that little thing that Bill Hicks went into, uh, in one of his, uh, comedy things. May he rest in peace, but... Anyway, um, moving right along. So, that's, um, one of the videos I watched. Um, the other video I watched was a lecture by, um, uh, Nassim Haramein, um, quantum physicist, about, um, you know, Einstein, unified field, um, you know, all that sort of thing. And I really liked how Nassim was totally, um, just outside the box on Expanded perspective, um, no dichotomy. Whereas I felt that, you know, the debate between Ken and Bill is a, you know, just, it's, it's a typical dichotomy that allows people to, to bicker and bitch, you know, endlessly with no resolve, you know, it's just a, a battle of ego, and, um, I mean, I'll, I'll give the, the link to it so you can check out all the conversations and stuff, a lot of trolls also kind of chimed in too, and that was pretty funny, I'm actually thankful for that, because it kind of helped to illustrate the point, but, um, one person, and I edited, the, I edited the description for this to include these links too, but um, one person tossed up a video, Monty Python Argument Clinic, and um, I also um, tossed up a, a link to the video, um, Debunking the Debunkers, which outlines the difference between um, skepticism, cynicism, and gullibility. Um, overall, I, I think the whole thing kind of cohesively, you know, formed together pretty well, um, with all the different examples of multimedia co content to illustrate the points, and, you know, the trolls chiming in and doing as expected within the dichotomy only kind of helped my illustration, and, you know, helped me by providing, you know, real-life, um, example there. So, I mean, you know, you've got what Nas Nasson Harriman said, um, you've got the... You know, Bill, Bill Nye debates Ken Ham, and you know all the, you know all the other side references and stuff. So, 
I'm pretty well satisfied with with how it you know it all turned out. I mean, it's you know it's, it's pretty cool. I was really happy with it. Um, of course, there's people that replied, you know, more or less, you know, civil as well. I mean, the majority of it was trolling, of course. But I'm having some really good conversations on there too, and I'm not going to like go into all of that for fuck's sake. However, there is. One reply that I made to somebody that I feel that it's it's the best job that I did so far in like summing all of this up. I mean, yeah, granted it's you know, it's a little long, it's about the equivalent of one book page. But um you know, it's still a, a summary compared to say, you know, a whole book. <laughs> so, you know, needless to say, um this this guy was um Basically, you know, outlining the, um, you know, his thoughts on the debate between Ken and Bill. And, you know, from my view, you know, even though he was very, you know, um, polite about everything that, you know, he said, I, I still, you know, felt that it, it falls into the dichotomy box there. And the way I'm viewing it is like, you know, outside of that box to my own um, expression my own uh, critical thinking and discernment. And I just kind of like, let my reply just kind of <laughs> flow out from me. And, you know, it, it didn't really require even much thinking on my part, it just kind of like, like, like poured out, like my muse was speaking through me here. And I just think that, you know, so far it's the, the best job I've done with, um, just making the points on just just what it is that I mean and what it is that I'm seeing and and why. Um, so I'm gonna read that to you. And you know it's it's cool. You can think what you want of it. Uh, you know you can you can like it. You could hate it. Um, you could think it's in inspiring. You could think it's rubbish. You know you, you could you could think that I've got a lot of good points. You could think that I'm just a delusional, you know, in insane, eccentric, you know, whatever, who needs to shut the hell up, or whatever it is you want to think, it's fine, you know, that's, that's, you know, your right to your view, and, um, I'm not trying to conform you into my view, I'm not sitting on a cloud here going, oh, look at that dichotomy, oh, look at them, they're so beneath me, so you need to, to come and see things as I do, because I'm transcendent on my cloud of holiness, no, 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 I'm just expressing my view, and I encourage you to think critically and use discernment and your own intuition and instinct and your own observations and just, just make up your own mind. You don't have to agree with me, you don't have to disagree with me, you don't, you don't have to do anything. Just, you know, blank out your mind right now, forget everything you think you know, and just kind of, you know, observe all this as just you perceiving reality from your own perspective and, <clears throat> you know, keep whatever I say that res resonates and, you know, trash bin the rest. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking to convinced you of anything. I'm just sharing and make of it what you will, so. On that note, I digress. The way I think and perceive the world is completely outside of the box. Very similar thinking to people such as Einstein or Nasser. Also, just as those two also have believed, I do not buy into the way society defines genius. So by comparing myself to Einstein and Nassim, two geniuses, I must also acknowledge that within every human being, there is a unique genius. Therefore, it is a matter of free will choice as to whether or not we acknowledge our inner genius, <coughs> excuse me, whether or not we acknowledge our inner genius, and whether or not we have the courage to experiment with it in practical application. Einstein, Nassim, uh, the Wright brothers, Nikola Tesla, and many more all made the choice to develop confidence. They had no more or less genius than any other human being who has ever lived. As the human species generally has not yet learned how to have their left and right brain make peace as a whole within itself. What we blindly label as genius is merely our subjective opinion of approval of a form of expression and nothing more. For example, if a society thought that clay art was pointless and stupid and had no beauty and served no purpose, 
then this society could never acknowledge the genius of artists who have great skill with clay. As Einstein once said, the educational system is such that judges the intelligence of a fish by its ability to climb trees, and so the fish will forever assume that it is an idiot. Such as Einstein, I view reality as a fractal, and I think in terms of holes and variable configurations. I've always been like this since a small child, but only in recent times have I had the vocabulary to express the idea more accurately. My spelling still sucks, though. I would be lost without a spell checker. When one views life in fractal perception, the idea of opposites being in opposition, and the pointless debates fought over such dogma, are mind-boggling, because it amazes me how we are taught in school to put imagination into such a mind prison cell that we forget how to notice the obvious. We even say such idiotic things as, light will defeat dark, and I scratch my head thinking, but if light defeats the dark, we will go, we'll all go blind. White text and white background is impossible to read. You cannot have beautiful stars seen in the night sky without the night sky. If the night sky was the same brightness as the stars, how would we know where the stars end and the sky begins? We even pit left against right, politics. We judge being on top is good and being on the bottom is bad. How could you have left without right or top without bottom? How is positive good and negative evil? If we judge the positive prong on the car battery is good and the negative prong is evil, who would be too terrified to start the fucking car? Then what is good and evil anyways? To some people, being polite is good, and being rude is evil. But all societies have very different ideas of what polite and rude actually even are. And the way we ask questions in the so-called enlightened and intellectual society is absolutely pathetic, because if you ask narrow-minded questions, you can only see in terms of narrow perception and answers. It's like asking the marital status of the number five or the political orientation of a tuna fish sandwich. Of course humanity would debate on this forever, hopeless without a resolve, because questions like that are nonsense and do not have any answer other than the question is nonsense. We say that telling the truth makes us a good person and being a liar makes us a bad person. What happens if you tell the truth in the face of a law which is corrupt and unjust? Then you will go to prison or be murdered by the state because you told the truth instead of lying to protect yourself. So is it good to tell the truth if it is told to a tyrant who is going to abuse you and or kill you for having told it? Does it make you a bad person to spare your own life with a lie told to a psychopath? Every aspect of society, including the so-called sciences and religious dogma, is based on these absolutely psychotic ways of perceiving reality. If we are completely honest with ourselves, then we could say that 99% of what we assume we know is reality was spoon-fed garbage, and we never had the opportunity to experience for ourselves and decide for ourselves. We are told from cradle to grave what is true and what is not, and even the best of open-minded critical thinkers, including myself, are still partly trapped in dogma. Now, as soon as one who is trapped can admit that the trap can still fool him, then he has hope to one day be completely free. But for as long as we assume that because we are aware of the psychological mean virus humanity suffers from, that this awareness automatically grants us an immunity, we have become the most easily deceived fools, even more asleep, than the most blind of sheeple. We become intellectual mediocrity. Any decent psychologist will happily admit to the fact that it is no measure of health to become well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society. That neurological disorder and biological disease is a completely natural and moreover an inevitable consequence of an increasingly totalitarian society. That for as long as the mind is blind, the eyes will never truly see. And um, directed specifically at this person who I was talking to. I said, so much as I respect your rights to view Ken Ham and Bill Nye as you do, and you do make your points quite well. 
they are still inside of a box of perception that I can't keep a straight face about. It is a box I know well, because society taught me how to think the same way. I mean no insult by this, as I very much see every aspect of the world around me as a direct reflection of an aspect of myself. Otherwise, I would not be experiencing a world that is the way it is. You cannot have the air around you without also having it inside of you, if you understand my meaning. The state of the world is a shared responsibility for all humans. It is not for us to put the weight of the world on a select few people and then act so completely surprised when they inevitably fail to meet our ridiculous and unreasonable expe expectations. For example, governmental literally means mind control. You know, govern, that's all, <laughs> control, mind. But if we act as children, should then we demand such a babysitter? Adulthood has become a state of extended adolescence. To assume that humans need government is like assuming that because a baby needs diapers, that it is somehow evidence that all humans forever are required to remain in diapers and that diapers are an aspect of human nature from which it is biologically, emotionally, and mentally impossible to overcome. So people come to hate government, but they think a lack of government means a total breakdown into chaos. So they try to invent better governments, but whether you are talking about democracy, communism, socialism, or any government, a diaper is still a diaper and is always full of shit inherently. A human being who insists on holding on to a mediocre perception of reality cannot possibly have any grasp on what a society run by something completely and totally different from government would even look like. Just as a five-year-old has absolutely no way of being able to fathom the idea of understanding how to build a car engine. To the five-year-old, the car engine is the magic of grown-ups, and so as grown-ups, when we refuse to believe that we are capable of thinking outside of the narrow box of reality, then anything outside of that box we assign as something so magical that only an almighty creator God can understand it, but never a human, or we just dismiss any ideas that are too far outside the box as irrational delusional thinking, and we write it off in our arrogance. Resource-based economics is the closest thing to accomplishing a governmentless ideology that does not have most of the pitfalls of democracy, communism, socialism, etc., yet still retains just enough similar flaws on a subtle level that it is still inevitable that such a society would ultimately collapse under its own weight, just as all empires to date have risen and fallen. We can invent beautiful constructs that can work perfect, but when we refuse to raise our own thinking up to be on the same level as these beautiful constructs, then like a small child with a glass bowl, we will inherently shatter everything and make a huge mess. For as long as we assume that this higher thinking is not a part of human capability, then we will not ever reach it as a collective human race. For as long as we assume that higher thinking is limited only to the most popular and widely recognized definitions of genius, then we make it impossible for most people's genius to be recognized inside of themselves for themselves, much less acknowledged by others. They say we use less than 10% of our brains, and that it is some huge mystery as to why these regions are not active. It's not a mystery to me at all. The brain is like a muscle. What we do not use will atrophy. We live in a society that discourages the use of senses higher than the five, and restricts imagination and critical thinking in favor of, uh, in favor, in favor of popularizing us authoritarian dogma and self-destructive dichotomies. So no shit, 90% of our brain has atrophy. This is not only expected and logical, it is total common sense. If someone did nothing but sit on their ass all day eating pizza, would we expect them to look like a supermodel or bodybuilder? Of course not. Such expectations would be totally psychotic.
So because humans think so irrationally and psychotically that even the height of our intellectualism and technology is based on a foundation of this psychosis that we are in denial of as we participate in a global Stockholm Syndrome, as increases in our age and experience regress us deeper into states of extended adolescence, we take knowledge as our authority and shun our own abilities to think critically. We take popularization and fads as idolic gods that, that rule our thoughts and emotions. Rather than allowing our thoughts and emotions to flow with the natural calm and reason that can be seen clearly in any child who still understands how to observe the obvious hiding in plain sight, we become addicted to the idea of appearing as if we are right, and we view the idea of making a mistake as a sign of weakness. It's as if society as a collective has dropped down to an average age of six, and every male and female has been metaphorically pumped with lethal levels of testosterone, turning absolutely everyone into a rational, the, excuse me, <clears throat> turning absolutely everyone into an irrational pissed off alpha male whose only shelter from the storm is practicing to skillfully protect their denial with such artistic genius that the human fools not only others with their stunning performance, but they also trick themselves. So people tell me that I'm delusional for thinking with my own mind, and that I'm unreasonable for not just blindly accepting Whatever load of horseshit that someone with enough money, social status, and PhDs wants to hand me? Well, pardon me if I appear insane to the population of the mental asylum we've creatively labeled as planet Earth. I'll wear the label of eccentric lunatic as a badge of honor. If such a backwards population of humans actually thought me to be competent, that is when I'd begin to worry. It has gotten so much out of hand that we are slaves even to wordplay and semantics. They call it spelling for a good reason. A word is a series of spells and a sentence is a series of sigils called words. The more narrow-minded people become and take these as authority over even their own instincts. It's easy to play the Jedi mind tricks on us. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Please do move along. And thank you for shopping Walmart. Continue to pay illegal force tributes they deceptively label as taxes to a bunch of gangster oligarchs and don't forget to use the Vaseline before you bend over. As a common example of this sort of stupidity I always run into, let's take the idea of the universe being electrical and holographic. Well, dude, that's just a theory. Otherwise, it would be called a law. And everyone would recognize it as fact. Tur, 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 tur. Woo! Well, it is as best as common sense can tell, factual. The determination can only be come to by way of critical thinking, discernment, and as objective of observation as possible. It's not really all that hard to connect the dots, and all of the science that proves these things tends to get ignored because it is extremely offensive to the religiously accepted scientific dogmas that are also monetary, multi-trillion dollar industries that are protected more ruthlessly than a lady with a chastity belt on surrounded by Dobermans. Electricity, light, energy, frequency, vibration, the list goes on. But these are all only slightly differing perspectives on the same one holistic thing. The same type of t-shirt, which comes in different colors, metaphorically speaking. So let's look at some common and largely known examples. Visible light spectrum as well as light that we regularly use that is not visible, such as microwave, x-ray, television signals, radio signals, Wi-Fi, internet, cell your phones, and the list goes on. Even sound is light being perceived through different sense organs of the body. 
Ugh. Sorry, I'm a bit congested. So my voice is kind of liquidy. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> What's I here? This is all old news. We've been using these technologies and this knowledge for quite a while now. Few people are unfamiliar. Most people at the very least are able to see, <laughs> or have a radio, or TV, or internet access, or a cell phone, or something they can relate to with these forms of technology. Very common, no big deal. Now we have the stuff we call matter. That which everything around us, including our own bodies, appears to be made of. So this matter is supposedly made of these much smaller things called atoms. All atoms are made of 99% space, which is one form of energy, and 1% of the commonly accepted view of what energy is. You know, electricity, light, frequency, vibration, etc. So these atoms are made up of even smaller things, which subsequently are made up of the before-mentioned base components of the two different known forms of energy. In short, that which we can see, and that which we cannot, but it's all energy. So these smaller things, made up of this, we label as protons, neutrons, electrons, and so on. So the only thing that makes any matter differ from any other is the configuration of these smaller components, almost like a recipe. Cake and bread are almost identical, but with enough difference in configuration to make them almost completely different at the same time. So the only difference between dog shit, gold, and my face is the configuration of protons, neutrons, and electrons which then are variable assortments which create the differing expressions of what atoms can be. Alright, fair enough, but riddle me this. How does that which is made of energy, light, frequency, and vibration, which has zero mass, <laughs> are non-physical, never touches, and even all of its smallest components are separated by electromagnetic fields, create solid material objects which have mass and solidity. The answer hiding in plain sight, they cannot, they do not, and they never will. Please do excuse me. <laughs> and yes, I am feeling too tired and or lazy to go back and edit out any little glitches like that, so <clears throat> my apologies for that. Anyway, I guess, I guess it's kind of like being on internet radio live, you know, even though technically I am pre-recording this. If I wasn't, and it was live, well, you know, all that stuff would end up uh, recorded in the radio stream, wouldn't it? So, I'm kind of treating this in the same way. So, moving right along. Matter is a perceptual illusion in terms of how we currently imagine it to be. The five senses are nothing more than electrical impulses being interpreted by the brain. That is the blunt truth that offends the ego which wants to think that there actually is an out there, out there. The truth is that there isn't. Reality is an illusion, albeit a persistent one, admits even Einstein himself. This alone proves the universe is electrical, seeing as it's all made of the same stuff. It has also been observed countless times that objects in space do not interact as expected to according to classical mechanics. They act the way we would expect electricity to act as different frequencies of energy come into close proximity with each other. So we can dance around the language and make excuses all we want, and we can dress up dog shit and call it a hamburger all we like, but the Emperor has no clothes. So now what's a hologram? Simple. 
A structure made up of light which appears to be in three dimensions. According to what we know about matter and energy, this is a perfectly accurate description of physical reality, ergo the universe. Or multiverse, or whatever the hell you want to call it. So just as we can pretend that the video of the monkey dancing around on the computer screen is actually us looking out a glass window at a physical monkey in front of us, the deceptions we bullshit ourselves with do not change the nature of space-time. Everything is energy and light. Everything is electrical. Nothing ever touches. Everything and everyone is non-physical waves of frequency being perceived as a 3D reality. Does this mean that reality is not real? Well, of course it's real. It just doesn't function like the billiard ball's idea of physics any more than the Earth is flat. So we reject the obvious and use word semantics and petty bickering and ego to do it. The most stupid thing of all is that in a system where the minority makes rules for the majority and we stupidly look up to these people as gods incarnate on Earth and we toss our own critical thinking and intuition and instinct to the fucking wind and tribute to these idols we obey and worship blindly like small children. We have the arrogance to make claim that the difference between a law and a theory is that which does or does not have official popular recognition. That is an absolutely psychopathic and utterly insulting and totally irrational idea, or a totally irrational idea, that everyone claims to be completely rational and reasonable. If trusting my own intelligence and experience and observation and intuition and instinct and inner being over that of a minority of rich popular assholes who insist we bow down to them somehow makes me irrational, unreasonable, nonsensical, delusional, and otherwise insane and non-credible, then absolutely positively so fucking be it. I'll wear the accusations with pride and honor. If we had a theory of trees that was not recognized as law, then I would not say, well, I'm not actually seeing a tree in front of me. It's only a theory. I would say there is a tree in front of me, and if someone wants to think, if someone else wants to think me a twit for saying so, it's perfectly fine by me. A tree is nothing more than a word used to express one's subjective perception of an objective experience. There's lots of symbols we call words, and lots of dictionaries, and lots of different languages. All we are doing is taking a symbol and giving it meaning. Just as verbal words are nothing more than noise with syntax, and from the perspective of the birds, it is humans who are chirping nonsense. So as individuated humans, we cannot help but view the objective reality from a subjective perspective. Neither science nor religion, <laughs> the same thing in my view, we acknowledge this, and therefore the bickering and bitching over semantics as egos go flying and tempers collide with each other continues on this earth as we murder each other in wars, treat friends and family like dirt, have total apathy for our fellow humans, love things and use people instead of loving people and using things, acting as if living in a disposable society is the height of man's progress, as we slowly but efficiently wreck the planet and turn our environment into a trash can. So people can absolutely, act fucking excuse me, for deeming accepted human sciences and dogmas as completely non-credible, as the shitty reputation of the human race illuminates brightly its constant failures to be able to see the obvious or do much of anything in a responsible and capable manner as a collective. So when asked to follow Tom and Jerry, or the Three Stooges, as my god and only real reality as it is labeled as reason and science and morality, I have no problems about answering that demand with a resounding fuck no. Does this mean I reject knowledge and shun other perspectives? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that I sovereignly invoke my human right as a living entity on this earth 
to have my own learning experiences and think with my own mind and express as an individual, rather than blindly following the orders of arrogant buffoons. I mean none of these things in a negative or heated or angry way. The facts are just so blunt that it's quite understandable if the insecurity of most humans can do nothing other than view my dissertation as negative and pessimistic. Whereas on the contrary, I view these realizations as liberating and empowering. All negative events are opportunity for positive change. Everything is opportunity, not burden. Even the most horrible things, with this shit, it can fertilize a garden. We do not have to stink up the streets. We do not have to leave it stink up the streets at all. So, that's my view on it. Of course, if, you know, reading the actual text, it would probably take a lot less time. Unless, of course, you're a slow reader. But obviously, I'm doing my best to speak it in, in such a way that I'm not rambling so, so, so fast. That people are like, wait, what? Backtrack? What was that? What did you say? So, trying to be reasonable about it. So, um, that's why this is a bit lengthy. Anyway, so... That's my two cents and a dollar fifty for all who give a shit or don't. Whatever you want to make of it, feel free. That is all I have to say on the matter. I hope you've enjoyed listening, and you know, please uh, like, fave, share, subscribe, blah blah blah. <laughs> you know the drill. Alright, thank you and peace out.